<clears throat> so uh, the title of today's workshop is Fitting in Fitness. Um, it's going to be a presentation essentially on, on some basics of time management and um, some simple, easy ways to get more activity in your daily routine so as to better help you, um, you know, pursue a healthier lifestyle overall. Cool. Do we have any questions before we get started? No? All right. So uh, I like to use videos because I think they're funny and I think it helps everybody just kind of relate. <clears throat> So you guys get the gist though. That was actually made like in 1987 as a uh, satirical video for uh, librarians to get more exercise in while they're at work. Did you guys hear them counting out the reps for, for swiping in books and then like doing stamps and all that stuff? Um, so while that video is satirical, uh, today's presentation is actually gonna be a little more serious. Um, I am gonna show you guys some techniques so that you can uh, you know, be more active while you're in class, in the library, on your way to class or the library, um, because I know that's where you guys spend all your time, right? Right. Yeah, good. So, <clears throat> this is just kind of a uh, word cloud that I found. Um, how many people see something up here that they have going on in their life right now? None of you? Let's, let's see hands. I want, act I want action. Action. All right. How many of you see five things up there that you have going on in your life right now? Yeah? So education, home, family, learning, homework, school, uh, children, all of these things are something that I think we can all associate with as people who are going through school. Um, so you have to learn to prioritize your time because I get it. School is very important, but you have things outside of here, family, work, uh, home life, a job, you know, um, these, these are all things that we have to take into consideration when we're figuring out that work life balance or school work life balance. Um, this is actually a pie chart, um, done by a federal study. Um, it includes individuals from the ages of 19, or sorry, 15 to 49 who are enrolled full-time in an accredited college or university in the United States. This was done by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, you can kind of see here the college student's average use of time. Um, 
and I can't remember uh, the exact number, but this, this was a very large study. There were thousands of participants. Um, so this is pretty reputable data. Um, so roughly 6% <clears throat> of your time is spent traveling, and this is just in one day. 10% uh, is other grooming, 3% eating and drinking, 4%. 14% educational activities, 10% of your time is spent working and work-related activities. 36% of your time sleeping, so a third of your day, which is about right, you know, eight hours out of 24, that's a third. Um, and then 17 is leisure and sports. Now, depending on what you do for work, um, that could be physically active too, so you could maybe bump that up um, depending on what you do for a job. But uh, the majority of jobs, if you work for a university institution, um, particularly as a student staff, um, are probably not as active um, as they could be. So what we're going to focus on today is figuring out ways to you know, get more activity in your life so that you can feel healthier overall. So I actually have an activity for you guys. How many of you, you guys all have a pen? Yeah? OK. Three and four. I will even give you the paper. There you go. There you go. There you go. And there you go. So for this activity, let's pretend that I am rich. If only that were true, y'all never see me again. Um, so I'm going to give each of you $86,400. You can spend it any way you want to, but you can't put any of it in a bank. And if you don't use it, it's gone. Disappears forever. So write down why or how you spent your or how you would spend your money and why you would spend it that way. I'll give y'all, I don't know, three, four minutes. I mean, yeah, if you want to break it up into those things, uh, that would be great. So if you want to spend $20,000 on a car or and $15,000 on, I don't know, a watch. Okay. So I'm going to put the money in the bank and put the You want to do this too? Or actually, you probably got to go soon, huh? No, I said you probably got to go soon, huh? They're still going. Ron is planning on taking them. time you guys were going to meet initially. You guys got some good answers? Who needs more time? Everybody got something written down? I mean, if you want to spend it all on one thing, that's, that's your prerogative. I might. I don't know. I guess it would depend. So we're going to kind of go, you know, state your name and what you would spend it on and why. Start over here. Okay, my name is Isis. I can't get to break down on everything on there, so I guess I lose most of what we have there. I put uh, around. Thousand on a car, a thousand for every half a week on food, just because I prefer to cook than to go out. Uh, about five thousand for home mortgage for every like six months, and then a thousand two hundred uh, for medical needs. Okay. 
So I heard a lot of car, tuition, uh, food, you know, things that you would spend that money on for, for yourself or for your family to better yourself or to better your family, um, you know. So um, the reason I actually have this up here is because that number is actually how many seconds there are in a day. So it kind of puts things into perspective. Um, that's how much time you get in a day. How much of that time are you actually devoting to bettering yourself or your health or your well-being um, or, or you know, helping yourself further along in some aspect? Um, you know, obviously, we got eight hours for sleep, um, but then we've got 16 hours that you can do towards other things. And I realize you have class and work and stuff like that, but I just want to emphasize how important it is to make sure you're taking care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually. Um, you know, there's several aspects of wellness that you need to take into consideration um, with how you spend your time. Um, there was, uh, uh, essentially what I'm, I'm getting at is, is, is you only get one body um, and you know, it's, it's kind of your responsibility to take care of it. So that's something I want you to take into consideration when you think about your time management and how you're using your time. Um, and here we go. Yeah, so one of the best ways to help yourself moods, move towards um, getting healthier, getting fitter. Um, how many of you think you could, you could be in better shape physically than you are right now? No, you guys are in peak physical condition. Oh wait, what was your question? I said, how many? How many of you think you could be in better shape physically than you are right now? I just noticed. I think you're better than me. Yeah, exactly. We can always get better, except Freddie, who's apparently in the best shape of his life. All right, power <laughs> to you, man. <laughs> I dig it. Um, so I, I, I think we can always improve. Yeah. yeah? Um, there's always something we can work on. Um, I'm a big fan of progress, not perfection. Um, so one of the best ways to do that is to have a goal. Um, whether that be, you know, lose 15 pounds by my sister's wedding or, um, you know, drink one can of pop a day instead of 25. Um, you know, little, little things like that and making those goals is gonna go a long way in helping you achieve your bigger goals of, of weight loss, of you know, feeling better, looking better, everything. Um, you know, if you don't know where you're going, how will you ever get there? So um, having a goal is a good way to set up a roadmap to achieve those goals. Um, <clears throat> it's also um, a great way to start managing your time better because you're realizing your goals and how important they are to you and you can make make yourself a priority. Um, have, how many of you ever heard of the acronym SMART when it comes to goal setting? 
No? Okay. Two of you have? Excuse me. Um, so the acronym stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time Bound. So when we're developing our goals, um, you know, it's, it's actually been scientifically proven that writing things out helps your mind retain them. So when you're making your goals, write them out in a diary, in a journal, um, on the refrigerator, you know, as long as it's dry erase, I don't think mom will care. Um, whatever you gotta do. Uh, so this will, will help serve as a reminder when, when things do get crazy, you know, look at this and be like, oh, that's right, I, I still have this personal goal to myself that I'm working towards that's gonna make me better at the end of the year, in the next five years, overall. Um, so what SMART means, when I say specific, ask yourself, what do I want to accomplish? And specific means, like, say you wanna lose weight. Don't write it down, just lose weight. How much? Or say, uh, if, it, if it is um, measurable, you know, how will I know when, I, when it is accomplished? So say if it is, um, I wanna lose 15 pounds, or the measure doesn't necessarily have to be a number. It could be, I bought myself a size three dress. That's how those work, right? That's, yeah. I bought myself a size three dress, and that's what I wanna fit into by December. You know, making sure it is a specific goal that you have set for yourself because that makes it real. Um, it helps you visualize, um, it helps you understand and, and really buy into the whole process. Um, making sure it's achievable. Um, how can it be accomplished? Make sure that you have uh, the availability to go after this goal. Um, it'll, it'll be kind of hard to become a millionaire by, the, by December, you know, if, if you don't have a job currently, you know. So I'm all for, for shooting for the stars, but sometimes you have to be realistic with yourself and, and make sure that the goal that you're setting is achievable because we want to make sure that we're being successful at these things because it, it does help. Um, make sure the goal is relevant. So is the goal worthwhile? Is, is it helping support the things that I'm about as a person? Is it helping support my other goals? So uh, say you have a goal of running a marathon by next year. Um, your goal of losing 15 pounds by your sister's wedding, which is in two months, is gonna help with that goal, right? So we wanna make sure our smaller goals that are more short term are also helping support our larger goals in the long term which you know, could be graduation. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of like, I'm studying for my test tomorrow because that's gonna help me pass this class, which is in turn gonna help me graduate eventually. So we wanna make sure that all of this is tying back into helping us be successful, um, helping maintain a healthy lifestyle, and then time bound. Um, <clears throat> when can you accomplish this goal? So making sure you put a date on it. Um, you, know, you don't wanna be like, oh, I'm gonna, lose 15 pounds by, next year. see exactly, next year. That's at least a date. You don't wanna say by whenever and then you, know, you won't come back to it and have a sense of urgency. Setting a date on something helps you, is another way of making it real and, and making you realize, oh, if I wanna be successful at this, I need to work on it. So you know, losing 15 pounds by next year, um, you know, I would even get more specific than that. What date? By December. December of next year? No, December, sure, why not? December next year, the 5th, I don't know. Yeah, see, exactly, write that down. <laughs> I expect you to lose 15 pounds by next December. That's more than 15 pounds next year. But you get the idea. Yeah. So it's, it's all a matter of perspective and, and you know, I, I can't stress enough how much writing things down can affect your, your thought process um, on how to work towards things. So, this is another aspect of it. Um, and these, the way I'm starting to tie this into is, is achieving your fitness goals, achieving your health goals, um, your, your just overall um, wellness. So, what do you need to do? What will you do for exercise? How many days a week? Will you take group fitness classes? Will you run outside? 
Will you change your eating habits? Get really, really specific and start formulating a plan. You wanna work backwards essentially. So on December 5th of next year, you're gonna be down 15 pounds. And let's work backwards all the way up until today and figure out how many workouts we're gonna do. What, what other changes we're gonna make inside our lifestyle to, to better facilitate that. Because the better you plan it out, the more you're ensuring that it's gonna be successful. Any questions? And this can be said for anything, you know, failure to plan is planning to fail. Make a commitment, uh, not only to yourself, but you know, um, like I said, it's, it's gonna be more beneficial for your family, your friends, everybody. Um, we'll get into that a little later on. Um, so put it on the calendar, schedule physical activity as you would any other appointment during the day. Don't change your exercise plans for every interruption that comes along. So the big part of this, um, and as somebody who's worked with clients ranging from division one athletes to 80 year old gentlemen with a hip replacement um, and everywhere in between, the one thing that I've found that is, is consistent um, with people who are successful and unsuccessful, the major difference is the people who are successful make their fitness a priority. If they have an appointment with me or they have their own workout, they're not gonna skip it because it's raining. Now flooding might be a different story, I get it, we live in Houston. Um, but you know, just because it's raining and they're like, oh, it's raining, I don't feel like driving to the gym, that's not gonna stop them. You know, they're making themselves a priority. And that's something you know, we have to take into consideration. Um, scheduling it is a great way to do it. Put down in your own personal calendar, your date book, your planner, whatever you have. Say, all right, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I am going to work out. Set the time, um, you know, make time for it. And it doesn't have to take forever. I'll, I'll get into the details on that here in a little bit. Um, become a part of the team, sign up for softball, soccer, volleyball, um, Oh, we don't have softball, sorry. Sign up for any of the various intramural sports that we offer in sports and fitness. Shameless plug. Um, you know, we have club sports, intramurals. How many of you guys have participated in any of those before? No? So we, we even have open gym where uh, after, Lorenzo, do you know what time it is? That they set up the volleyball nets, three o'clock? Yeah, so three o'clock every day, they set up volleyball nets and anybody can go in there and play volleyball. Um, you know, anybody can go in and play basketball whenever they want. So, um, you know, do it as part of a team, you know, have fun with your friends, meet new friends, uh, join a fitness class. We also offer a wide variety of group fitness classes at the Student Life Center, and they are completely free as long as you are a student or you have a membership. Uh, so the group atmosphere uh, can be a great motivator and a bonding experience, so it's a great way to meet people. I know I walk by the classrooms and see people having a lot of fun together and they're burning calories and doing something that's beneficial for them. Um, something else that you can do is wear a fitness tracker or a pedometer. Um, so see how far you've come may motivate you to do it even more. I know um, you can do like a step challenge with you and like four of your friends. Everybody gets a pedometer. They're super cheap, um, I don't know, maybe not even a dollar. And, or actually if you have a smartphone, I forgot, everybody has a smartphone. Um, your smartphone probably is tracking how many steps you're taking right now. Does anybody know that? Yeah? Everybody knew that? Yeah, I didn't know that until like last year and my friend showed it to me and I was like, oh wow, I need to move around more. So, you know, um, it's something to take into consideration. Just look at that and maybe set a, set a daily goal for yourself. You know, it doesn't have to be 150,000 steps or something astronomical. Be like, hey, just so I'm making sure that I'm bettering myself a little bit, like a thousand steps. If I don't hit a thousand steps by the time the day's over with at work or school or whatever, say I'm 200 short, I'm gonna take the stairs instead of the elevator to make sure I get that. Or, or I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk to the grocery store instead of ride my bike or, or drive or whatever. Just something little can make that much of a difference in how you're affecting your body in the long run. Be motivated by money. Who doesn't like money, right? Nobody? You guys are bad at putting your hands up. <laughs> yes. All right, uh, so 
Putting some money on the line may provide you with motivation you need to show up for an activity, i.e. Um, gym membership. But if you're already a member here at the Student Life Center, you don't need to. I was just gonna refer to personal training. Um, so you can meet with our trainers. Um, it's only $15 a session, which is insanely cheap compared to commercial gym facilities or anywhere else. Um, and the best part about it is, is like they can help you if you don't know what you're doing or they can help facilitate your goals. They will put you through a goal writing process for your fitness goals and help you with that. So putting a little bit of money where your mouth is, like saying I wanna do it and actually making steps towards it. It's a relatively inexpensive way to do it. Um, think positively. So psychologists actually suggest that actively editing your negative self-talk pattern is a powerful way to support a healthier lifestyle choice. So what that means is anytime you catch yourself thinking, oh, I'm too busy to work out, uh, rephrase the thought into a more positive or empowering term such as I choose to make myself a priority or I do have time to be healthy or I am willing to do something active today. Over time, these positive thought patterns will elbow out the negative ones, helping you to see your available choices more clearly. So um, I've actually read some books recently that talked about uh, the importance of positive self-talk and how it can actually help you um, reach your goals. Regardless, in, and this isn't just fitness related, but I'm using it um, in fitness. So. I don't know how often I, I talk to people when it comes to exercising because that's what I do. I'm a fitness professional. Um, it's, it's not hard for me to get up and, at 5 a.m. and go work out. I love it. Um, but I realize, you know, that's, that's a little difficult for some people. So changing your perspective on how you're going to go about setting these goals and achieving those goals, um, this is a great way to do it. Like this one says, like, I don't have time. You know, um, I think it goes back to what I was saying earlier, like I'm not making myself a priority or I should be a priority. I do have time to work on my health because it's gonna benefit you in the long run. I mean, who, who, who in here doesn't wanna live longer? Huh? Everybody, so yeah. Makes sense, right? Wait, you say the other one to live longer? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't wanna live longer? I mean, being really old is not really something I'm like. Well, uh, I mean, especially if you're going to health and care science, you know, you actually see people who are really old and you kind of see their situation they're in. Like Don't think like that. The psychologist is think positive. That's hard, though. Especially if I'm going to go work in that field. I can see that. Yeah, I, I, I get where you're coming from. But, you know, you, you still want to, okay, not necessarily live longer, but you, you see the people who are active and they get to be older, like, there's people who are powerlifters and bodybuilders and, and, and gymnasts that are like 70. Yeah. So you wanna be, not, ne not necessarily live longer, but have a better quality of life yeah, as you get older. Yeah, that's so that's what we're working towards. I, I should have went around that. All right, uh, let's see here. Oh, so this is where we're gonna get into the easy ways to increase your activity um, just on a daily basis. So waking up early, um, I don't know about y'all, but I, I love getting up early. It's quiet, there's, there's I don't know. It, it, I feel like I get more done. Um, so get up a bit earlier than normally and, do, and use the extra time to walk on a treadmill or take a brisk walk around the neighborhood. Um, you know, walk around your block. Uh, it's first thing when you get up, just just get moving, get the blood flowing, get to feeling better, and you'll probably feel better all day, honestly, if you start your day that way. Um, make your chores count. So mop the floor, scrub the bathtub, um, housework at a fast pace. So, I mean, how many of you have cleaned your house before? Whether it's mop, broom, scrubbing. If you do it quickly and like, you know, don't take your time about it, you, you can get a good sweat going especially in Houston, right? So things like that, uh, make sure you're getting the most out of it. Getting outside, um, outdoor work counts too, mowing the lawn with a push mower, um, raking and hoeing, strengthen your arms and back and digging works your arms and legs. So, um, you know, any type of physical labor is, is gonna, you know, count. Uh, let's see. This is a great one. Um, I actually moved my couch out of the way in front of my TV to start doing stuff like this while I'm watching TV. 
Uh, so be active while you're watching TV. Use hand weights, ride a stationary bike, or do stretching routine during your favorite shows. Get off the couch to change the channel or adjust the volume. Um, something that I've, I, I don't know if I necessarily try to do it, but basically uh, every commercial, because who cares about the commercials? Every commercial, I'll try and do as many sit-ups as I can or, or something along, or, or 10 push-ups or whatever. Every commercial. Like, so if you've got the space to get down on the floor and do 10 push-ups every commercial or, or 20 sit-ups every commercial, um, 20 jumping jacks, something. You could do an entire workout routine in the 30 minutes it takes to watch The Voice or, or is, is that how long the show is? I don't know. Um, whatever your favorite show is, you know. Um, so if you did something like that every night, don't you think you would start to see some pretty drastic changes in a matter of weeks? Yeah? yeah. Cool. I mean, so it's, it's that easy. Um, it, it just takes, you know, the mindfulness to do it, to keep it in mind. So hopefully this presentation, when you guys go home tonight, you're going to be watching TV, commercials going to pop on, you're going to be like, dang, I should, I should do some body weight squats, or I should, I should get down and do some push-ups, um, something along those lines. What if you don't watch TV? Uh, hmm. <laughs> what do you do in your leisure time? What do you do in your leisure time? Read? Eat and sleep. Eat and sleep? That's all you do is eat, sleep, and school. Yeah. I work out. I go to work. Hmm. Well, I actually am going to talk about some ones you can do while studying, too. We'll get there. Uh, so... Get more out of your errands. Uh, when you go to the mall, um, grocery store, this is something I started doing without even realizing it. I didn't even do it for the health benefits. I just don't like parking at the front because I drive a big truck and I can't park in those tiny spaces. Um, so basically I just park a ways away so I don't have to worry about like turning and scraping somebody's vehicle. But parking further from the entrance ensures that you're walking an extra 30, 40 yards and, uh, you know, that's a few extra steps you can add on the pedometer. And, you know, you can use a cart if you want, but if you carry those groceries out, that's even more exercise. Um, if you have a little extra time, walk inside the grocery store for a lap or two before you start shopping. Not necessarily the grocery store, it could be the mall, wherever. Um, I mean, we all know those people who literally go to the mall just to walk around the inside of it, right? Yeah, just because they don't want to walk in the rain, I guess. I don't know. Um, so keep a pair of walking shoes in your car so that you're ready when you find a few minutes for, uh, for exercise. Paperwork. Oh, all right. So you guys still all got the piece of paper I gave you? Yes. We're, we're actually going to have to get up and get active for this one. I wasn't kidding. Um, so this gentleman is quite wise when it comes to working out but um and i know this is christmas themed but stand up stand up stand up i'll even do it with you all of the movements for your hands. <coughs> Talk about just how important those hands are. Remember, today's video, you can tag two friends for a chance to win anything in my store. So share this with some people who you think would benefit from this. Now this game, some of you may have seen earlier this year with some of my work. Uh, it's called paperwork. It's a lot more fun than that though. Essentially, this game is to teach you how to expand your movement circle with control and speed. So. The goal here is you're not allowed to grab it with your thumb. You have to use an open hand the entire time. So start placing the paper on top of your hand like so. And we're going to turn it upside down and follow it downward. And then bring it back up. So this first pattern is really nice and simple. And the goal is to find like a way to make that transition as smooth as possible. And then as you get more comfortable, we're going to turn this into a very continuous upward figure eight pattern. Now this figure eight pattern is extremely beneficial for your brain and they've even said that this kind of thing can help stave off 
uh, brain deterioration like Alzheimer's. So being able to really focus through this figure eight pattern is very beneficial. And by using the paper, it really forces you to keep a nice, tight arc. Um, and I would suggest that you also use that same idea. This is something I talk about a lot in my courses, uh, of expanding the circle. Oh, so you can go up, put it paper, down. I can't reach all the way. I have to reach only as far as I can pull back in. So I like to almost think of harvesting the air. So the bigger I can make that circle, it means the better control I have over my entire body through space. And also, as my arm reaches out further, I'm not saying you have to stand up in the library with a sheet of paper and dance around, but you get the idea of uh, how, how relatively simple it is to, to move. And, you know, that in, he was moving with his entire body. We didn't really have the space back there for it. But, you know, if you got to lunging down laterally and stuff like that, um, you did that for five minutes straight, you think your, uh, your heart rate would go up just a little bit? Yeah? It's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. What if, I mean, if, if you had to do that, if you got to do that for five minutes at the beginning of every class, do you think your, your class would be, would, would just go better in general? I'll be awake, yes. Yeah, yeah? yeah. No? I take online courses, so. Oh, so you can do that while watching the lecture at home. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, workout at work, so uh, making the most of your commute. Obviously, if you live in the spring, I don't expect you to run here. If you could, that would be really impressive. Uh, walk or bike to work or school. You know, if you ride the bus, get off a few blocks early and walk the rest of the way. Um, you know, it, it all ties back into doing those little, little things that are gonna help benefit you in the long run. Uh, take the stairs whenever you can. Um, if you have a class on another floor, get off the elevator a few floors early and use the stairs. Better yet, skip the elevator entirely. Uh, I'll admit I don't use the stairs here as much as I should, but I try to. Just kind of depends on my, my time, which is no excuse because honestly, the elevator's here. You might not ever make it to the floor you're trying to get to. Um, so the stairs are probably safer anyway, let's be honest. Um, <clears throat> taking fitness breaks. So rather than hanging out in the lounge with a coffee or a snack, take a short walk. Uh, this is something I actually try to do every day. I don't know how many of you eat lunch here on campus at the cafeteria? No? I have my own lunch. Well, I mean, but do you eat in like the cafeteria area? Um, yeah, I do sometimes. Or I go somewhere else to eat. Yeah. Well, you guys might see me usually every day around noon, depending on when I take my lunch. Uh, as soon as I get done eating, I will go and walk a full lap around the one main building just to get out of the office, walk around, I don't know, move. Um, little things like that, you know, they add up. They go a long way. Uh, skipping the email. So uh, Walking to a coworker or teacher instead of leaving a voicemail or sending an email. Now I'm not saying you should go talk to your teacher every single time you know you need to have a conversation with them. But you know, if you're in the library and you need and you're having an email conversation with your teacher or your friend or texting or whatever, and they're on the other side of the building and you could better facilitate that by, by a short walk, might as well do it, right? Um, take it on the road. So if you travel, plan ahead, um, bring a jump rope, choose a hotel that has fitness facilities. If you're stuck in an airport waiting for a plane, grab your bags and take a walk. Um, if you're traveling or, or you could do uh, stretching or simple yoga poses. A friend of mine, um, she runs her own yoga business and uh, she was posting on Instagram, like she was waiting in the Denver airport and they got a layover or something like that. She basically did a full on yoga routine just there in the waiting area. It was entertaining for other people, I'm sure, but you know, she was making it a priority with the time she had to spare because what else are you gonna do when you have a two, three hour layover in an airport? You just got done sitting down for a two hour flight. You might as well move, right? All right, now we're gonna do yoga. 
Great segue. And you don't even have to get up for the entirety of this one. Like this is chair yoga. And lift your head back up to center. Take your hands over to your right side. And let your right ear fall to right shoulder. Again, relax your shoulders away from your ears. Close your eyes. And breathe. Good. Come back to center. Release your hands, and then we'll take a twist from here. So take your left hand to your right knee, and your right hand reaches behind at the back of the chair. Inhale, lean in your spine. Exhale, gently draw your navel in as you twist to the right. Inhale, lean in. And exhale, twist. Good, unwind back to center, other side. Grab the back of the chair, inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, gently draw the navel in and twist. Nice, come back to center. Cross your right ankle just above the left knee for a seated pigeon pose. So keep your right foot flexed. This might be already a lot for you right here. You can stay there. Or you can start to fold forward when you're keeping your hands on a chair. Maybe you can take your arms down, relaxing your head down. Breathing into intense sensations in the hip. back up and switching sides with your left ankle above the knee. Keep your foot flexed. Again, either staying here or holding forward. and let your head be really heavy. So you can stay still, you can sway side to side gently. I like to think about kind of empty. Oh, you guys don't want to do this one? Yeah. Space, decompressing the spine. I'm not that flexible. No. 
Good. Slowly roll up with your knees bent. And then come behind your chair. So hands to the top of the chair and walk. As Yoga. Far back as you can. And then fold forward. So let your head rest down. You should throw this stretch in your shoulders. I'll do that one. Your lower back, hamstrings. Oh, you guys don't know what you're missing out on. <laughs> oh, that, that did feel good, though. Yeah, see, Freddie, doesn't that feel awesome? Yeah, all right. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, get back in. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Namaste. Don't you guys feel more limber, better? No, not at all? You feel worse? Oh, my glutes feel better now. See? That was five minutes. So if you're studying for an hour, if you get one of those in for five minutes, I'll bet it helps. So little things like that can go a long way. And, you know, there's thousands of those videos all over the YouTubes. So it's easy to find. Um, Another way, to, um, another really important part of this is enlisting help or developing a, a, a support system. You know, you want to make sure that um, your family and friends are supportive of, of what you're trying to do. You know, you're, you're trying to better yourself. Uh, so involve the whole family. Take group walks before or after dinner. Play catch, ride your bike, um, whatever. Just, just be active as, as a family, as a group, or even with your friends. Um, start a lunchtime walking group. The regular routine and the support of your fellow students may help you stick with the program. So, you know, if you guys want to follow me around while I walk around at lunch, then by all means, you know, whatever. Uh, get your dog in on the act. Take daily walks with Fido or Fluffy. I didn't write that. <laughs> if you don't have a dog, borrow one. Uh, an enthusiastic dog may give you the motivation you need to lace up your walking shoes. I mean, who doesn't enjoy walking a dog? It's, it's kind of fun, right? Just watching them be dogs, I guess. They have to start chasing us for our own. Well, then you got to hold on and run. Sometimes they still have it. It's more physical activity. Yeah, yeah, but I was a kid bulldog. when that happened. Hmm? An English bulldog? So he's going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so he needs exercise too. No, she doesn't. She, sorry. Um, Recruit a walking buddy. That way, even on days when you're a bit lacking in motivation, knowing that your friend will be at your doorstep ready for a walk can help keep you moving. So, you know, making, making time with a friend um, that you haven't seen in a while or, or whatever, making plans to do something, that'll help you keep it. Um, you know, if you get off work and it's Wednesday and oh, I had a rough day, I don't want to walk, but you know Samantha is going to be there, so you got to walk because... That's the one time you get to hang out with them. Um, plan active outings. Make a date with a friend to hike on a local park or take a family trip to the zoo. Uh, go dancing with your friends, whatever. Do something active. There are so many parks here in Houston. That is one reason why I love this city. Um, I actually lived in Phoenix before this. And, well, it wasn't near as green because it's a desert, but there didn't seem to be parks anywhere. That's one thing I love about this memorial. It's awesome. The bayou, all that, that whole area, that huge walking running path. It's, uh, I haven't been there yet. Yeah, exactly. They're everywhere. So there's all kinds of, and like, you know, I've driven down Allen Parkway and just all the time. It doesn't matter if it's four o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock at night, there are people running on that path or walking on it. Um, get social. So try a dance club, a hiking group, a golf league. Um, encouragement from others can help you stay with a new activity. So, you know, that kind of circles back to trying intramural sports or club sports, um, if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, oh, sweet. I about timed that. Perfect. Um, so this is the last video I have for you guys. Um, have, have any of you guys, you might have seen this video. I know it was uh, circulating on Facebook and stuff for a while, but it's it's called the, I think it's called like the the mayonnaise jar or something like that. But it's it's really good about perspective. Um, I think it was a psychology professor who made these videos, and it's 
it's really interesting just considering time management. I want our house to be the deal. Everybody wants to hang out. How about an LG OLED TV? It's got Google Voice Assistant built in. Add an LG soundbar, and movie night becomes movie night. Well, that family just got a new superhero. Um, you to recognize that this jar represents your life. Golf balls are the important things, your family, your friends, your health, and your passions. The pebbles are the other important things, your car, your, your job, your home. And the sand is everything else. It's just a small stuff. Now, if you put the sand in the jar first, you won't have room for the pebbles or the golf balls. The same is true of life. You spend all your energy and your time on the small stuff. You won't have time for all the really important things that matter to you. Pay attention to the things that are critical to your happiness. Take care of the golf balls first, the really important things. Set your priorities, because everything else is Who doesn't want to win a fantastic prize? No? Alright. So, 
whoever wins our door prize drawing gets to choose from one of these. And I tried to orient the prizes so that they could actually help you better facilitate your fitness. We've got some resistance bands that you can take home with you and use. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to be doing Alcohol Family Feud, where we actually go over some facts and uh, you know play a Family Feud style game for some fun prizes. Um, also, if you're not already, uh, sign up for, or not sign up for, but take a card for Fitness Bingo. Uh, the more stuff bars for the sport and fitness you go to, the more prizes you can win. So, thank you.